Welcome to the online worship service of First Federated Church of Peoria, Illinois. I am David Ezekiel, Transitional uh, Minister. We are so glad that you have joined us today and so look forward to seeing you when we are able to resume in-person worship. Today, we are installing leaders for our congregation, administrative leaders for the work of the executive board, and pastoral leaders for the work of the diaconate. We are so blessed that God continues to raise up people for the total work of ministry in this church. This says to me that this church is committed to helping people develop their spiritual gifts for the journey of life. And if you need that kind of support in your life's journey, then you could find a home here at First Federated and Companions along the way. Join with me and let us enter into the worship of God. Partners in ministry, today we rejoice in Christ's special care for the church. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. We share one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one ministry for reconciliation. For this ministry, Christ has given gifts to all of us. Christ equips us for work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, and for serving a broken world. And so we come together in oneness of faith. To God be the glory for building up this church. Praise God's name for such gracious gifts to all of us. In the spirit of unity and purpose, let us worship God. Join with me in prayer as I verbalize for all of us our shortcomings. Eternal God, in every age there have been men and women who have lived faithful and obedient lives. And we confess that we are not always in harmony with your will. You call us to proclaim the truth in love, but there are times when we are silent. You command us to do what is just, but too often we are idle. You beckon us to live faithfully, but minor matters distract us. Forgive us and transform us 
so that we may follow your guidance and share Christ-like love with the world. Amen. The Bible reassures us of God's grace and says this to us. Beloved, lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to God's own self through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, God has entrusted the message of reconciliation to us. We will be God's ambassadors as though God were making an appeal to the world through us. So it is a means of practicing this assurance. Call someone today and check on them since we're not able to be physically together. And be Christ's ambassador and tell them that you want to extend God's grace, the church's love, and let them know that we are together in Christ always. lesson for today, which comes from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. His focus in this text is to assist them in recognizing their spiritual gifts and using them for ministry. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul writes, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. This congregation has elected persons to lead us in administrative and pastoral service. I wish that we were able to be together so that you could see all of their faces, hear their heartfelt affirmation of their calling. We call this testimony in the life of the church. And you could, at that time, provide your blessing for their lives and ministry. Maybe we can celebrate this moment at a later date when we're able to gather together in person for worship. But what I will do is ask a series of questions to our slate of elected persons and to which representatives of the congregation will respond on your behalf. And you will hear those pre-recorded responses. To our incoming officers and deacons, 
This church has considered your gifts of ministry for service. You have accepted the office of leadership to which you have been chosen. And you have accepted this call as God's intention for your life. And in light of this, your calling, do you promise with the Lord as your helper to faithfully fulfill the duties of your appointment? Will you ask God to fill you now with the faith and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ for the boldness of Peter, for the courage of Deborah, for the evangelistic zeal of Philip, for the administrative insight of Priscilla and Aquila, and for the wisdom of Paul? As God has endowed each of you with unique gifts and talents for the edification of the church and the work of ministry, Will you accept this church office in proportion to your faith to minister, to teach, exhort, to give liberally, to lead with diligence, and to show Christ's love and mercy? Do you covenant and promise that you will walk together in love for one another and exercise affectionate watchfulness over all those given in your charge? Will you, according to your abilities and opportunities, show good to all, especially in helping to extend the gospel in its purity and power to the whole human family? And will you regularly support the work of the church by your contributions, both spiritual and financial? How say you? My name is Mary Gordon. In answer to the questions asked, I affirm that I will, with God's help, perform the duties of my office. As a co-laborer with you and God, I ask for your prayers, support, encouragement, and cooperation. I will use my talents to lead God's people according to the sermon of God's will so that the ministries of our church may be strengthened, for together we are the body of Christ. My name is Rob Hackett. In answer to the questions asked, I affirm that I will, with God's help, perform the duties of my office. As a co-laborer with you and with God, I ask for your prayers, support, encouragement, and cooperation. I will use my talents to lead God's people according to our discernment of God's will so that the ministries of our church may be strengthened. For together, we are the body of Christ. My name is John Comer. In answer to the questions asked, I affirm that I will, with God's help, perform the duties of my office. As a co-laborer with you and with God, I ask for your prayers, support, encouragement, and cooperation. I'll use my talents to lead God's people according to our discernment of God's will so that the ministries of our church may be strengthened. For together, we are the body of Christ. My name is Luke Sheely. In answer to the questions asked, I affirm that I will, with God's help, perform the duties of my office. As a co-laborer with you and with God, I ask for your prayers, support, encouragement, and cooperation. I will use my talents to lead God's people according to our discernment of God's will so that the ministries of our church may be strengthened, for together we are the body of Christ. My name is Mimi Anderson. In answer to the questions asked, I affirm that I will, with God's help, perform the duties of my office. As a co-laborer with you and with God, I ask for your prayers, support, encouragement, and cooperation. I will use my talents to lead God's people according to our discernment of God's will so that the ministries of our church may be strengthened, for together we are the body of Christ. My name is Ann Ferry. In answer to the questions asked, I will affirm that I will, with God's help, perform the duties of my office. As a co-laborer with you and with God, I ask for your prayers, <clears throat> support, encouragement, and cooperation. I will use my talents to be God's people according to our discernment of God's will, so that the ministries of our church may be strengthened. For together we are the body of Christ. My name is Jenny Frank. In answer to the questions asked, I affirm that I will, with God's help, perform the duties of my office. As a co-laborer with you and God, I ask for your prayers, support, encouragement, and cooperation. I will use my talents to lead God's people according to our discernment of God's will, so that the ministries of our church may be strengthened. 
for together we are the body of Christ. My name is Sherry Willie. In answer to the questions asked, I affirm that I will, with God's help, perform the duties of my office. As a co-laborer with you and the God, I ask for your prayers, support, encouragement, and cooperation. I will use my talents to lead God's people according to our discernment of God's will so that the ministries of our church may be strengthened, for together we are the body of Christ. Members, Members of, of this household of faith, you have heard the promises of these whom you have asked to be in leadership, these who have answered God's call to service. Though we cannot all be together to affirm our intention to be in covenant with them as representatives of the congregation and acting on your behalf, we celebrate with the joy that is ours to be partners with our called leadership in the service of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the congregation, we promise to love you, honor your leadership, and assist you that together we may be a faithful church of Jesus Christ. We give you our blessing for ministry, for together we are the body of Christ. We would normally have conferred the apostolic blessing of the laying on of hands as we commissioned these to service. And we would have presented a white towel, like the one I have hold in my hand symbolizing servanthood as a reminder of this day. We will endeavor to do this another day. As you have conferred your blessing upon these servants in ministry, let us ask the blessing of Almighty God, the one whom each of us serves. Eternal God, you have called these people to serve you in the household of faith and in the world which you have entrusted to our care and keeping. Send your Holy Spirit on them that they may serve among us with honor and faithfulness. Empower them to be diligent in their duties that your church may prosper in the mission you place before us. May their example prove worthy for all of us to follow as we are united in Christ's ministry to the glory of your name and the reconciliation of all creation. Amen and amen. May God uphold you and direct you as you go forth. Praise be to God for this ministry in Jesus Christ. Jesus, oh Jesus. 
Hi, I'm David Ezekiel, and the focus of the message today is on using your gifts for leadership in God's church. Are you a gifted person? If asked a question like that, we've been taught to mumble some modest denial. And it would be rude to go around describing ourselves as gifted because in conversation we use the word gifted as the same thing as being talented or exceptionally talented. Since we generally understand talented to mean being better at something than most other people, we are wise to be cautious about identifying ourselves in such a way. But being gifted in the biblical sense is not the same thing as being talented. Not all of us are talented, but by God's design, all of us are gifted. The Apostle Paul further elaborates on that in another place by stating, uh, stating uh, that each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gifts. The gifts he gave were some that would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. These examples do not exhaust God's gifts list as there are many, many ways to be gifted by God. One way to understand these gifts is that they are the raw material and the tools that God gives us for certain purposes of leadership. And Paul is quite clear about what that purpose is. It is for the common good and building up the body of Christ. In other words, they're not for our benefit, but for the benefit of others. So, Whoever you are and whatever your circumstances, whether you are multi-talented or untalented, you are a gifted individual. And the gifts God has given you are for the benefit of others. That is the point of this message. I do not know why you have the gifts you have, and I have the ones that I have. I only know that we have them for the same reason, to build up the body of Christ, to benefit others, to serve the communities of which we are a part. And in doing so, we are exercising authentic leadership for the people of God. In an essay on leadership, David Foster Wallace ventured this description of authentic leadership. A real leader can somehow get us to do certain things that deep down we think are good and want to be able to do but usually can't get ourselves to do on our own. It's a mysterious quality, hard to define, but we always know it when we see it, even as kids. Deep down, you almost always like how a real leader makes you feel, how you find yourself working harder and pushing yourself and thinking in ways you wouldn't be able to if there weren't this person you respected and believed in and wanted to please. In other words, a real leader is someone who can help us overcome the limitations of our own individual laziness and selfishness and weakness and fear and get us to do better, harder things than we can get ourselves to do on our own. In part, the scriptures are about the real leaders which the church needs, people who can catalyze followers of Jesus to do better, harder things than we are likely to do on our own. Some church leaders are like the apostles. They're women and men whose experience with Jesus Christ is so immediate that their minds reflect his lights and their hearts radiate his warmth. They have an authenticity and an urgency which comes from their experience with Jesus. Some are prophets. They're able to discern the sometimes subtle intersections of God's word with the world. They have eyes to see the signs and ears to hear the whispers of God's presence. And they have the ability to put their visions and their intuitions into words. Others are evangelists. They are such trustworthy embodiments of good news, such magnetic examples of faith hope, and love, that they attract people to the Jesus who is at the heart of their own lives. Still others 
are pastor teachers. They have a tender and tenacious concern for the people entrusted to their care. They combine compassion and wisdom. They offer truth tempered with love and love strengthened by truth. Not only that, the scriptures also describe the work God calls those leaders to do, to equip the saints of God for the work of ministry, build up the body of Christ, help people to become like Jesus. And equipping involves training. Leaders often offer people experiences which help them turn their gifts into skills, their talents into practices, their passions into actions, and their concerns into disciples. Equipping as training is an indispensable part of a church's ministries of Christian education and spiritual formation. Equipping is more than training, however. More deeply, equipping is about restoration and healing. The word equip comes from an interesting family of Greek words which describe, among other things, uh, this setting of broken bones during surgery, fostering healing, and working for rehabilitation. The, this same family of words makes an appearance in the Gospel of Matthew's account of Jesus' calling Galilean fishermen to, and to be his followers. When Jesus invited James and John to the adventure of discipleship, they were in the boat with their father, mending their nets. Mending is from this same family of words, so mending and equipping are related which means that to equip is to weave back together the frayed edges of life, to repair brokenness rather, to, that rather than to write off the broken, and to restore rather than to discard the shattered. It is to help people trust that in spite of what life has done to them and with them, they can be useful again. Boy, is that something that's really needed in our country right now. And I'm very grateful that in the life of this church that there are people here who have the abilities to help equip and mend people for the journey of life to be on the road to spiritual renewal, to be on the road to be full-fledged disciples of Jesus Christ. This understanding of equipping means that when you use your gifts, you are <clears throat> involved in a crucial dimension of healing and restoration. All of us have experiences which rend and tear us. We all have times when fatigue or failure tempts us to give up on ourselves. Leaders recognize that sometimes what people most need is not to refine their skills or to avail themselves of more training. Instead, what they need are grace and mercy and renewal and confidence. They need to know that it's always possible to begin or to begin again. A summary of what I've just stated might be characterized as follows. God has given the right gift along with the right resources in the right person in the right body of Christ, at the right physical location, at the right time, for the right reason, to be utilized as our only right response and to be deployed with the only right attitude. Join with me as I conclude this portion of our time together with prayer. O oh God, you who sent gifts of the Holy Spirit to those first saints, we know you continue to send gifts to us, even though we do not often claim them. We confess that we've not always opened our gifts. We have often chosen to keep them packed away or buried. Move us by your Spirit to pick up our presence that you so freely give to open them and to spend them lavishly on the stewardship 
of your world. And we thank you that in the life of this church that there are men and women who have answered your call and are willing to do so with grace and love. But, oh God, we do confess to you how often our thoughts and motives are confused, both individually and when we are together as your people, and that this confusion has often blinded us to your interest in our lives. Break into our confusion and astonish us anew, O oh God, for our prayer is that you will claim us again and silence within us our desire to always have words for every occasion that we might hear the whisper of the wings of your spirit, Dove. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, the same one who taught us to pray along these lines. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Thank you for letting me be a part of your life today. service today and we are truly thankful for so many who have participated so 
as we close out the day, let me give to you this benediction. For this day, blessed be the Lord God who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's glorious name forever. May God's glory fill the whole earth. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Amen and amen. Thank you for inviting all of us into your homes. And may you have a happy new year. And I'll see you again right here next week. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in Him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and He will be my Savior.